praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Amen. Well, praise God. Thank, thank you for tuning in today. Welcome to Christ Alive Christian Center, where you are a part of something great and you are blessed to be a blessing. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service. We welcome all those of you who are worshiping with us, uh, whether here in New York or in, um, in, in um, Kingston, in, um, in Ghana, any part of the, of the world. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank God for his protection over us in this season. And I uh, just want to remind you, please share this link with your friends on uh, Facebook, um, any, anywhere where you're, however you're watching it, and just choose to be a blessing to somebody. I'm Pastor Lan Rachel Mori, an associate pastor here, and I, I'm excited to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we are going to get into the Word of God, and um, I'm excited about that which God laid upon my heart to share with you. And um, we just trust the Holy Spirit for a time of inspiration and um, you know, insight into God's word. Amen. Let us, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for your presence here. The Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We thank you for the entrance of your word that gives light today. Lord, I pray that you'll cause my tongue today to be like the pen of a ready writer, able to speak a word in season. I pray, Father, Lord God, that by the time we leave here, we'll be able to boldly say it was good for us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Today, I want to um, talk to you about a topic uh, that, I, that I titled, Creating Access Through Your Gift. Creating Access Through Your Gift. You know, early, early in this pandemic, um, you know, the Lord spoke these words to me, talking about how in this pandemic, um, you know, despite, you know, the, all the, 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 the tragedies that have happened, unfortunately, in this pandemic, but also that there is going to be a disruption in processes that will lead to an explosion in opportunities, and that that's going to cause timelines to be accelerated for the discerning and well-positioned, for the discerning and well-positioned. And I think that it's, it's so important for us to be aware that we need to be properly positioned. You know, God has, the, you know, the Bible talks about how we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation you know, call forth out of darkness into his marvelous light. Bible talks about how we are to show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness. So even when there is darkness, God has called his children to be children of light. He has called us to be a beacon of light in this world. And God has equipped us to be light in the world. You know, the Bible says that we are light, we are salt. We are, we are chosen to make a difference, to, 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 to expand the kingdom of God. So you, you and I have been equipped to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. And one of the things that God has done for us is that he has placed in each and every one of us a gift. He has placed in us something that is unique and that is specific to you. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 17, it says that, for if because of one man's trespass, that's the lapse, the offense, death reigned through the one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace and the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. God's purpose is for us to reign in this life through Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible talks about how we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. But why is there sometimes a difference between what we are experiencing and what the word of God says about us? And we're going to get into some of that today. You know, it's important for us to see what the Word of God is saying and to believe that Word and to believe 
that word. It's not enough to just know it. We need to believe it. We need to believe it. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, uh, here that we are to reign in life by one Christ Jesus. You accepting Christ into your life has empowered you to reign in life. And reigning in life does not just, it, it's, not, it's not just talking about your involvement in the local church, even though that's important. It actually talks about reigning even in your in your in your place of occupation. It talks about your territory. It talks about you being able to dominate in terms of being able to be recognized as a leader in whatever field you're in. You know, and whether or no matter what your occupation is, we have been given undue, you know, undue influence in whatever area we are. So we need to recognize that reigning in life includes anything that you're involved in. You know, reigning in life as a parent, reigning in life as a, as a, as a, as, you know, as a doctor or as a teacher or as a, we have been given the ability to reign in life by, by one Christ Jesus. And that includes both reigning internally, because sometimes the greatest battle is, is the things that we tell ourselves. It's the things that we tell ourselves. Forget about what the devil is saying. Forget about what, what your friends are saying. Forget about what the enemies are saying. A lot of times, half of the battle or more than half is the stuff you're telling yourself. That's why the Bible says in, in Proverbs, it says that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we need to be able to reign in life. If you are not able to exercise biblical authority over your day-to-day, -day, over what is going on on the inside of you, over how you see yourself, there is no way you can reign in life. You know, the Bible talks in, 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 um, in I believe it's in Acts, where it was talking about the sons of Sceva, where, where, where they went and they confronted a, a, a demon-possessed person, and they were trying to cast that devil out, um, saying that, you know, you know, and they used the word, you know, the, the, the sentence, you know, in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. And the devil says, you know, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? So you need to be able to know the word for yourself. You need to be able to, you know, recognize what God is doing in your life and exercise that dominion in you before you can even begin to apply it in, the, you know, out there, whether it's in the business world or in the other places. So we need to exercise that, you know. So we begin to see here is, you know, when, it, when, when the Bible says that, you know, reigning, where it says that, that we, should, we should reign as kings through one man, Christ Jesus. It says, you know, reigning in dictionary.com talks about a period of time during which someone or something is the best or the most important or even powerful. Royal authority, dominion, sway. You know, uh, it's, it's the time in which a sovereign person reigns. Uh, it's, a, it's to possess or exercise sovereign power or authority. It also means, you know, to have control, to rule, to influence of any kind. We should have control over our emotions. We should have control and dominion over the affairs of life. God wants to bring us, and, and then he talks about being, you know, be, be, to, 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 to be in a place of dominion, sovereign power of, or authority. So, the, so it, it, it also means to predominate and to be, to be prevalent, to predominate and to be prevalent. So God wants to bring you out of obscurity to a place of prominence. I want you to say that to yourself. God wants to bring you out of obscurity to a place of preeminence. And God has already done that in you coming to know Christ. Bible talks about how we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people called for to show the praises of him who has called, called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God is calling us out of obscurity. You see, the greatest darkness in your life was the darkness 
of sin. And by God or Jesus coming to die to forgive us and to cleanse us of that sin, now we've been translated to the kingdom of light. God never expected you to live this life just being normal. No. God wants you to, 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 you know, to exert his influence in this life. You know, Christ is God's gift to you. Christ is God's gift to the world. So, but, but speaking to you specifically, Christ is God's gift to you. But then Christ in you is also God's gift to the world. Christ in you is God's gift to the world. So one of the things we have to ask ourselves is how many lives are better because you are alive? How many lives are better because you are alive? How many lives are going to be impacted today because you woke up? You are God's gift to the world. The Bible says in, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27, it says that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So you are God's gift to somebody. Stop, you know, the, the, the whole idea of you thinking that, you know, you're saved and, you know, and everything is all about, well, God is going to bless me so that, so that I can have this, so I can have that. No, God is impact, has impacted you, but then you then have to impact the world. So this is more than just you. He has placed in you a gift. He has placed in you your, 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 your redemption so that you can be a blessing to somebody. So that you can be a blessing to somebody. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, Proverbs 18 and verse 16, it says, A man's gift will make room for him, and bring him before great men. It says a man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. You know, now, of course, I recognize that this can be in the literal sense in terms of just, you know, presenting a gift and making room for you. But I'm also talking in the sense of the gift that God has placed on the inside of you being able to create room for you that will bring you before great men. Hallelujah. Or that would, you know, that will create a space, that will create an entrance for you that cannot be contested. God wants to bring you to that uncontested place. Another trans translation says that it will stand before kings and, and not before mean men. Not before mean men. One of the ways in which God wants you to reign in life is through that which he has placed on the inside of you, your gift. So it's important that you do not sit on your gift. Why? Because there are many people, there are many lives that are connected to the gift of God on the inside of you. There are many lives that are connected to it. You know, Mike Murdoch put it, put it this way. It says that God will always give you the ability to produce what you need from what he has already given you from what he has already given you. What has God placed on the inside of you? What has God placed on the inside of you? Miriam Webster says a gift is simply a special ability. So the first thing we're going to look at today is you need to recognize that you have a gift. You need to recognize that you have a gift. Turn to Romans chapter 12, and we begin to read there from verse 3. Romans chapter 12, we, we begin to read from verse 3 to, to 8. He says, for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, 
So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in, in proportion to our faith or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Now, I know that this is just, a, 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 you know, a, 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 a small section of the gifts that is available, but this is a good place for us to start. It says that God has given to each one of us the measure of faith. And then it says that having gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. So whatever God has given you, you need to use it. Well, there is to exhort somebody. And don't, I want you to think broadly here. Don't just think about gifts within the, 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 the church, you know, of what you can do on a Sunday or a Wednesday or whatever. No, some of the, you know, the gifts of God go beyond this. You know, for some of you who, you know, for, you know, who, who you are exhorting, you know, for me, like, you know, I have a gift when it comes to exhortation. Now, that works out great when I'm, you know, even talking with patients as a psychiatrist. Why? Because I'm there to help to instill hope in them, to help to discover that sense of purpose. So your gift, so your your gift transcends just being in church. It, 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 is, it is for humanity. It is for you to be a blessing to mankind. Hallelujah. So you need to recognize that you have a gift. Everybody has a gift. It may be a subject, it may be a trade, it may be with people, you know, it may be, you know, teaching, counseling, you may have a gift with numbers, you may have a gift with a with a whatever it is, God has placed in you something. So yes, there is a spiritual gift, but there's also a natural gift. There is something that comes easy to you that is difficult for somebody else, or that 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 that, that other people find very difficult. It may be the, uh, the ability to recognize value in things that other people don't. That's a gift. It may be an improvement on something. It could be an invention. It could be a subject. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 99, it says, I have more understanding than all my teachers because I meditate upon thy testimonies. You see, when, when the part of the, you know, when you begin to expose yourself to the word of God, it actually will unveil more and more of your divine enablement. As we see here, it could be teaching, supporting, administration, helping, encouraging, forming, even growing companies. The problem sometimes is that we, we, we often see ourselves primarily as consumers rather than producers as consumers rather than producers. You need to see that you have something to give the world, not just as a consumer. God wants you to make a difference. God's creative ability was placed on the inside of you. So never sell yourself short. Hallelujah. Number two, you must believe in your gift to exercise it. You must believe in your gift to exercise it. You know, you know, one of the things the Lord quickened to me recently was that, you know, when, you know, you may know a lot, but, the, but, but how much of it do you actually believe? You know, we may know a lot, but how much of it do you believe? And you're not going to take action until you believe it. So if you want to look at believe, Look at how you're living your life. That is actually what you believe. Bible says in Proverbs 20, 23 and verse 7, As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. That's why when you wake up, on a Monday morning or whenever it is that you look around you, your life is not a shock to you. Why? Because that is what you've been thinking about. So if God is going to move you to the next level, we need to begin to think differently. 
So you must believe in your gift if you want to exercise it. In, in the book, 10 Distinctions Between Entrepreneurs and Employees by Keith, Keith Cameron Smith, it says, if you don't believe in yourself, you will never find opportunities. You will never take the necessary risks and you will never achieve the meaningful success that you desire. You know, it's so sad to, to you know, to, and sometimes we think we're being humble. You know, you, 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 you do something and a limited number of people look at it and say, wow, you really have a gift in this area. You need to do something about it. And then, uh, you know, a few weeks go by, somebody else says, oh, you have a gift in this area. You need to do something about it. Oh, yeah, you have a gift in this area. You know, you see, it's good for people to acknowledge what is in you, but you're not going to go far until you acknowledge what is on the inside of you. The Bible talks in, in you know, in Philemon chapter verse 6, it says that the, that the acknowledging of our faith should become effectual by the acknowledging, sorry, that the communication of our faith should become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. Every good thing. You need to be able to acknowledge every good thing on the inside of you. You need to be able to acknowledge that. You need to be able to acknowledge that. It's not enough for other people to acknowledge it. Phi, Phi Lemon 6. It says that the sharing or the communication of your faith may become effective by the acknowledge, acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Why are you majoring on the bad things and ignoring the every good thing? Every good thing that is in you, you need to acknowledge it. You need to acknowledge that you're smart. You need to acknowledge that you're quick to learn things. You need to acknowledge that you're willing to take risks. You need to acknowledge that you're anointed, that you are gifted, that you, are, that, 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 that you grasp things quickly, that you're equipped. We need to acknowledge the good things that, it, uh, that is on the inside of us. Stop acknowledging the negatives because it is what you acknowledge that, is, that, that you are going to experience. And that is what is going to dominate your life. So what have you been acknowledging? What have you been acknowledging? You must believe in your gift. The, the, the other thing he mentioned, uh, Keith Cameron Smith, he says, self-doubt is the reason so many employees remain employees. And you don't even have to be a business owner to be able to walk in your gift. No. Right there, wherever you are employed, you can be the top. You can be the pace setter anywhere you are in. Without faith in yourself, he mentioned, you will always need someone else to tell you what to do or you will look to others to give you permission on what you can do. How many people are waiting on others to give them permission? Yes, some people will rise in a crisis, but you don't always need a crisis to be able to rise. Well, there's a crisis now with the epidemic. Who are you waiting on? Who are you waiting on to give you permission to step out and do that which God has placed on the inside of you? The Bible talks about how we should arise and shine. You know, it, it says believe that the, the, he also mentioned here in, the, in, the, in his book that many more people should be ent ent entrepreneurs because, but they find it tough to find a job that, that will keep up with their skills if they are not constantly developing them. Also, you may not have the skills and abilities that, do f that, that fit into your job description. What does this mean? It's, it's, it's talking about how, you know, you need to keep building up your skills 
And sometimes the reason you are stuck in that particular job is because you really have not taken time to develop and build your skills. So you're afraid to take that step into the next phase. Why? Because you know that you have not done what it is, what it takes to invest in your skills. So you are settled in that place. You should always be seeking to outgrow your job because of your skill level such that even that company will have to look for something else in order to keep you there. Why? Because you are excelling. You are excelling. You are meeting the target. You are, you are, you are going even beyond what is expected of you. You know, don't shut down your mind because you are not getting paid. Some, 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 some folks, you know, you just keep your mind active between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. From 5 p.m. to the next morning, you just want to watch, watch TV. Stop just focusing your mind from 9 to 5. Your mind can be productive from 5 p.m. till 9 a.m. You know, somebody put it, put it this way. It says, great minds discuss ideas, good minds discuss events, but small minds discuss other people. Good minds discuss ideas, Sorry, great minds discuss ideas, good minds discuss events, small minds discuss other people. What percentage of time are you spending discussing other people? You know, that 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. is not dead time. That is the time you should be allotting to planning, to research, to execution. Planning, research, execution. You need to have a goal for each week of what you want to accomplish. You need to have a goal for each month, a goal for each year that reaches beyond what your job description is. You cannot limit your life to job description. No, you can't do that. What is the return of God's investment on the inside of you? What is the return of God's investment on the inside of you? You know, let's, let's, let's turn to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to begin to read there from verse 14. Many of you are familiar with this. is the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents. You know, for the I don't know if we have you know for the sake of time, um, but let's let's see how much we can we can we can cover here. He says in verse fourteen, he says, "For the kingdom of heaven is like a man who who traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his his goods to them." And to one, he gave five talents to, to another two, to another one, and to one according, and to each one according to his own ability. So stop, stop wondering. And the, the talent here, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's here, it's talking about money, right? It's, it's talking about money, but the principle is still the, the same. So he, he gave them talents, one, to, you know, he gave to, to, um, five talents to one, another two, and to another one, to another one, to each one according to his ability, and immediately he went on his journey. Then he who received the five talents went and traded with them and made five talents. And he who, who had received um, two, he gained two more, but he who received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who, who had the five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. 
he who, who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said, said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Verse 24, then he, who, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Oh, Lord. Reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at the coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he who has abundance, and he will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And then he says, and cast the, prof the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What is, what, so what are the things that we see here? That God wants an investment. He wants a return on his investment in you. God placed, he gave them money. And he wanted them to do business with the money that he gave to them. What does that mean for you and I? Whatever gifts God has given us, he expects us to invest that gift, to trade with that gift. He wants you to impact the lives of others. And you notice here that God, you know, the master, you know, here did not tell them what to do with the talents. He did not say to them, you know, this is what you do. No, they had to figure it out themselves that they needed to do something with their talents. And he gave it to them according to each person's ability. According to each person. So stop waiting or stop looking at other people saying, oh, wow, this person's ability is so, is so this, you know, so, you know, they, 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 that's why they are doing that. No, God gave to them according, each person, according to their own ability. So there is something you can do to make a difference. There's something you can do to make a difference in your life. God expects you to reason through the process. And God does not ex accept excuses. Because, listen, you, you look at the, 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 the one who had won and gave the reason. He says, well, you know... Um, then who received the one talent says, Lord, I, I know that, that, that you're a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. I was afraid, went and hid the talent in the ground. He was afraid and went and hid the talent in the ground. And, you know, in verse 26, it says that, but the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You know, one of the things I, I, I put it in, in, my, in my books, um, you know, whether it's in the, you know, the, the transition to greater or even in seize your moment, um, they, they're all on uh, Amazon, is fear, sorry, is that laziness often manifests itself as fear. That which we say that we, that we kind of, you know, hide under, oh, I, I, I'm fearful because, you know, I know God gave me this talent or this, this gift, but I'm not quite sure how to do it. A lot of times it is actually laziness. And, you know, somebody may have looked at that and thought maybe the master would have said, oh, I understand, you know, fear, you know, you were fearful. Tell me, tell me about your fear. You know, when did the fear start? You know, how do you experience the fear? In what kind of environment is the fear? You know, no, he said that you are simply lazy. 
In his particular case, he says the reason you did not step out and do something with it is that you are wicked and you are lazy. So he did not accept fear as an excuse. So don't, you know, don't allow fear to be what keeps you from stepping out in that which God has ordained for you. He expects you to be profitable. God is in the profit business. Turn to Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17. Isaiah chapter 48 and, and verse 17. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which, will, which leads thee by the way that thou should go. I'm the one that teaches thee to profit, teaches thee to profit. God is in the profit business. So whatever he has invested in you, he wants to see profit. He wants to see profit. He did not, you know, he, you know, and, 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 and as I said, he has given to each one according to his ability. It was according to their own ability. So you can act ignorant, you can be legitimately scared and have a perfect set of excuses, but listen to this, God knows what he placed in you. God knows what he placed in you and he's going to place a demand on what he has placed on the inside of you. And he will be assessing you, not what he gave to your, to your friend, not what he gave to your neighbor, but what he gave to you. And when God brings it up, you will not be able to deny it. You may deny it to your friends. You may deny it to, to the people in church, to the people on the job, and say, you know, you, you don't know anything about it. But when God stands before you and says, remember this that I placed in the inside of you, you will know exactly what he's talking about. Come on now. And you know God has placed in you what you need. Why? Because heaven doesn't have any recalls. You know, there, there's no, oh, wow, you know, um, for, for those children born around March, between March 12th and March 15th, 1970, you know, 1980, you know, there was a bit of a manufacturing problem, you know, that when they are exposed to trials, they crumble because they don't have the grace to overcome. So there is a recall. We need to fix something in the, in the assembly line, in the DNA. No. There are no recalls in heaven. So stop waiting for a, for a news flash saying that in the year of your, in the month of your birth, there was a recall. No. Fearfully, wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Fearfully and wonderfully made. No recalls. No recalls. Everybody comes fully loaded. You know, a lot of times you want to go buy, buy a car or you want to buy something. You know, everything starts at just the base. You know, everything. You know, some, some airlines, you know, it's like base. You know, the ticket is base. And then you want to pick a seat, you have to pay extra. I'm like, what, where do you expect me to sit? What, the, 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 the price I paid where were you hoping that I would sit? You know, you want to buy a car? You know, it's just the no frills. You want it fully, fully loaded? Thousands and thousands of dollars on, on top of it. But you need to recognize that you are fully loaded. The Bible says in Psalms 68 and verse 19, it says, Bless the Lord who daily loads us with his benefits, the God of our salvation. The God of our salvation. So don't wait, you know, don't wait for somebody to give you permission to take action towards the lifestyle of success and significance that God has ordained for you. Zig, Zig Ziglar put it this way. He says that you can get anything in life that you want if you are only willing to help enough people get what they want. If you are willing to help enough people get what they want. Hallelujah. And finally, 
you need to be prepared to start where you are. You need to be prepared to start where you are. You know, the, somebody put it this way that, you know, that the only place you can start is where you are. People are always focusing on what they cannot do instead of what they can do. The problem is we often do not take stock of what we have. We minimize what we have and we maximize what other people have. But you need to be able to take stock of what you have. We also do not develop and focus our energies on our gifting. Start with what you have, not what you don't have. Opportunity, somebody put it that way, opportunity is always where you are, never where you were. To get anywhere, you have to launch somewhere. You have to launch from somewhere or you will get nowhere. Ed, Ed, another person puts it, put it this way. If you expect the impossible, you need to be willing to do the possible. You need to be willing to, God is not going to do your part for you. Ted Roosevelt says, do what you can with what you have and where you are. The only way to learn anything thoroughly is by starting at the, at the bottom, except when you're learning to swim. Ken Key says, to be upset over what you don't have is to waste what you have, is to waste what you have. And then he also mentioned that people with enterprise accomplish more than others because they go ahead and do it before they are ready. You need to start where you are. Don't, don't be focusing on what you don't have. What do you have in your hand? When you look at, you know, Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1 to 2, you know, when God was speaking to Moses, he said, you know, what do you have in your hand? And Moses said, I have a rod. What do you have in your hand? God is looking for obedience. And God will always make sure you have what you have to move you to your next level. Do what you can with what you have. Hallelujah. Everyone who has arrived had to begin where they were. The truth is, you can't know what you can do until you try. You can't know what you can do until you try. We can say from now till, 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 till whenever that, you know, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. But until we actually step out in it, you, know, you, you cannot see that power at work. Why? Because that power is released on demand. It is released on demand. The most important thing about reaching your dream is to start where you are. A dream that does not involve risk is not really worth, called, worth being called a dream. And if you never take risks, you will never accomplish great things. Somebody else put it, put it this way. It says, everybody dies, but not everybody has lived. You know, the Bible talks about how the just shall live by faith. We need to live by faith. We need to step out on what God has placed on the inside of us. What has God placed on the inside of you? What is God stirring in your heart to do something about? Don't delay. Step out in that thing which God has spoken to you. Is it to start a business? Is it to start something online? Is it to, you know, so many businesses in this pandemic have been flourishing, have started, have gone to the next level. God is an expert on starting something in famine. And he will bring increase to you. Stop looking at the statistics. You need to look at your creator and the plans that he has for you. His plans for you are of good and not of evil to bring you to that expected end. Here in Christ Alive, this is our best year ever, our, our year of recovery and kingdom exploits. Hallelujah. 
God has recovery. God has exploits, kingdom exploits for you. Daniel 11 verse, verse 32. It says that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. I declare, this is, this is the, you know, you, you would see unprecedented increase in every area of your life. This year, our best year ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody put it this way. He says, you know, free enterprise means the more enterprising you are, the freer you become. The more enterprising you are, the freer you become. So God wants us to be in command. As, as I, as I con conclude here, God wants us to be in command in our lives. If you are going to exercise and you are going to reign in life, you need to be ready to exercise the gift that God has placed on the inside of you. And that includes allowing the word of God to bring dominance in your spiritual life, in your family life, your relationships, in your finances, in your careers. God wants you to dominate. He wants you to be in command. He doesn't want you to be under the circumstances. He wants you to be reigning in life by one Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll pick up from here next week. We'll go deeper into the word of God. There, you know, there's many, you know, so much more to unpack here. Um, and um, I'm excited about, you know, what we're going to be talking about next week. So please make sure you, you actually tune in because we're going to be looking into the life of Jacob. We're going to be looking into the life of, of, of Jacob and how this principle worked in the life of Jacob. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. But I trust you've been blessed today as we, you know, in, in this first session, I trust that you've been encouraged. I trust that you've been empowered. And I believe that that word that has been spoken today has fallen upon good ground and it will impact you. It will bring results that God will see fruits from that which he has deposited on the inside of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. I thank you, Father, Lord God, for those who are just under the sound of my voice, however they're listening, whether through the podcast, whether they're, they, 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 they're, they're, they're watching through any of the online platforms. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit will continually work in their lives, causing them to experience a greater measure of grace as they step out in abundance, that they will truly experience the goodness, the favor of God, that this will be truly their best year ever. This will be their year of recovery, the year of kingdom exploits, that the word of God will, 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 will become reality in every aspect of their lives. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're here and, you know, well, if you're watching and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to just take a few minutes to pray with you. The Bible says that what does a prophet a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? It says, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So I just want to pray, pray with you if you haven't accepted Jesus into your life. The Bible says that for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. If you're here today, we just want to pray with you. Even if you've wandered away and you don't know him as your Lord and Savior or you knew him before and you wandered away or you're just not sure, I want us to just say this prayer together. Just join me and say this prayer out, out, out loud. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I thank you because right now, I, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. I believe he died on the cross for me and he rose again from the dead. And right now I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I confess my sins and I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. And I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you said that prayer for the first time, there's, some, there's, a, there's an email, there's a phone number that is on your screen. I want you to be able to call us, you know, whether it's, um, you know, the, 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 you know, call us at the church office, you know, uh, 718-994-0514, or use the email that is on your screen currently with the title, Salvation, Salvation. And we'd like to get some material over to you. If you're around here um, within driving distance of the Bronx, you know, we are here on Virio Avenue. We, we you know, uh, the, the, the information is, is right there on, your, on the website. Come and join us for one of our services. Amen. And um, we just thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his loving kindness. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Well, we are going to prepare to worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, you know, we should be not weary in doing good, that whatever a man sows, he will reap. Amen. So with, with thank God, the Bible says that, you know, uh, we should give and it shall be given back unto us. Good measure, shaken together, running over, shall men give into our bosom. Amen. So we are going to prepare to worship the Lord right now with our tithes and our offering. Just to remind you, there are multiple ways that, that you can give. You can mail in your gift, your uh, tithes and your offering. Uh, you, can, you can drop it off um, here at the church building. You can give online at christalive.org christalive.org. You can text your giving to 646-832-4848. Uh, click on the link you receive and then enter the quick code Christ Alive for a one-time setup. The quick code is Christ Alive, a one-time setup to complete that one-time setup and you can give from there in future. You don't need to do that uh, set up anymore. Uh, and then finally, you can automate your giving through your bank, which is one of the ways that, you know, many of us give. Amen. So, uh, and if you're, you know, um, and, and, and of course, you know, for those who are, who come to the service, you can give, um, you know, in, in, in person during one of our, our, our services. Amen. So we just, we just thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his uh, loving kindness towards us. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. So let's just pray over the tithes and the offering at this time. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to worship you with our giving, with our tithes and our offering. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing us. Thank you for opening the windows of heaven and pouring out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. We give you glory and we give you praise right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you as you give and I, and I know that, you know, you will receive um, blessings back. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, just to give you some, some announcements. Uh, regular services continue this Sunday, the uh, 8 a.m. service. Um, so we uh, welcome you to join us in person um, during the, uh, the uh, 8 a.m. service. And then also we have a service at 1030 a.m., which is also going to be um, online. Amen. So the information is uh, right there. You can join us um, online through uh, Facebook and different, um, you know, and also YouTube and uh, other, um, I think, Twitter also. Amen. Um, there's limited seating. So please, if you plan to attend, please pre-register online for each service uh, at ChristAlive.org. Um, there are uh, you know, we do have some seats available for, for visitors who are not pre-registered, pre but these are limited. They're limited. So we strongly encourage you to please register. Amen. Um, our Wednesday service, you know, is, uh, is, is um, online. Um, if you need help registering, please call the church, 718-994-0514. Amen. Uh, yesterday was the preteens at 6.30, the children's ministry online. Um, it was the preteens yesterday at 6.30. Tomorrow, Thursday, um, will be um, the kids' church and the kinder church at 6.30 p.m. So the, the, uh, the Zoom login information is on the events page of the church's website, which is christalive.org, christalive.org. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe those are the announcements that we have. I want to thank you for, you know, tuning in, for worshiping with us today. I trust that you've been blessed by the Word of God, and I pray that you'll have a blessed week, 
And uh, let me just um, send you off with a blessing. Father, we thank you for, the, for our time in the Word today. And Lord God, I just release the anointing of God. I release the blessing of God over your people. We thank you, Lord God, for the blessed rest of, 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 of the week till we come together again to worship you on Sunday. Lord, we give you all the glory. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for your Spirit. Thank you for your joy, which is our strength. Thank you for that which you've deposited on the inside of us. And we acknowledge every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. I just want to remind you that without expectation, there, shall, there can be no manifestation because your expectation is your faith in action. Amen. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Have a blessed week and thanks for tuning in. Amen. Hallelujah.